my grandmother, who was 83 years of age when she died just a few months ago, would have been so proud to be here tonight, to hear uh, the marvelous story of one of the most remarkable ladies that the world has to offer today. And so you can imagine that being a Dutchman myself, that I'm proud of this citizen of Holland and this adopted citizen of America and this citizen of heaven. And uh, I'm thrilled that she would be here tonight to help us commemorate our 30th anniversary. She's no stranger to Youth for Christ because she attended one of the early congresses that was held back in 1948, which is one of the founding congresses of Youth for Christ. And I want you to really give her a warm welcome to Denver. Tati Corey. Would you welcome her? Corey Pender. for such a warm welcome. I feel really quite at home, although you can understand that I feel myself more the riper youth for Christ. <clears throat> it was really one of my great joys many years ago when I was in Seattle in the house of uh, Dr. Jepson, and there were some people sitting around the table and they talked it was Tori Johnson and uh, Billy Graham and Bill Bond and some more and they talked about how they could bring the gospel to the young people in Holland and how they could start the Youth for Christ in my country oh I felt a little bit as if I was in heaven that I found there people who were thinking about that and <coughs> I've always been very happy and thankful that the Youth for Christ was a um, uh, movement in Holland where many, many young people have found the Lord and also have found what it meant to be the light of the world. Tonight I will speak about the word of the Lord Jesus who has said, like the Father has sent me, so sent I you. And I will read from uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. I hope you don't mind when I read it from the translation of Philips. That is an English that even a Dutch could well can understand. <laughs> <coughs> there we read, if a man is in Christ, he becomes a new person altogether. <coughs> the past is finished and gone. Everything has become fresh and new. All this is God's doing, for he has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and he has made us agents of the reconciliation. God was in Christ personally reconciling the world to himself, not counting their sins against him, and has commissioned us with the message of reconciliation. We are now Christ's ambassadors, as though God were appealing direct to you through us. As his personal representatives, we say, make your peace with God. And I speak to the youth for Christ this evening, that you are called to be an ambassador of Jesus Christ. Like your astronauts were representatives from the earth to the moon, you and I, we are representatives from heaven on this earth. We are representatives not from Christianity, but from Jesus Christ himself. And when I speak, will you be so kind to pray? You can listen and pray at the same time. You can have the horizontal and the vertical connection at the same moment. 
pray that the Lord will work in our hearts that we can understand a little bit better what it means to be the light of the world in a very dark time of the world's history. Perhaps the world has never been so ill, so deadly sick. And you and I are called to be the light and the representatives of Jesus in this world. And there is a terrific work to do for you and me and every child of God. I once read a little poem and it has shown me um, really what it, a little bit what it meant that a person when he never hears of the Lord Jesus can get lost. It is such a tremendous uh, opportunity but also responsibility that you and I are representatives from Jesus and that we are sent in this world as the light and the salt. I said to one who stood at the world's far crossroads, which is the way that leads to eternal light. And he lifted his eyes to the hills ahead. And he answered, Yonder it lies. And the guide is still inside. Who is the guide? I asked. And he answered, Jesus. Who is this Jesus of whom I have never heard? And therein to a worn, distressed and bewildered comrade, he told of the Savior, word by precious word. I left behind me the dark and troubled valley. I took the road ahead and found him there, a light to my feet, a radiance to my pathway, and ever within my heart I am aware that I might have missed the way of the far-off crossroads if one had failed me and had not the words to say, follow your leader, follow the glory way. How shall they believe in him of whom they have never heard? How shall they hear within a, in, uh, without a preacher? People will ask, why was I not told back of the crossroads of this Jesus? My friends, you and I have to tell a poor, sick world the way of salvation. I read once a legend that was about the return of the Lord to heaven. The angels gave him a fantastic welcome and then gathered around him full of questions about his death, Resurrection and Ascension. What is it all about, they asked. The redemption of the world, Jesus replied. But you have come back here. How will the world know about it? I have trained my men to evangelize the whole world. Yes, indeed. Every corner of it. How many men did you train for such a mammoth task? A handful, Jesus said. A handful? But what if they fail? If they fail, I have no other plans. But is that not a great risk to take? And Jesus said, no, they will not fail. Isn't that a joy? When Jesus looks at you and at me, he knows that we will not fail. It, is seem, it seems in the world that it has gone down and down with the world. But in this book, we know the secret of God's plan. And God has no problems with this world, only plans. There's never a panic in heaven. And in this book is written about a great future 
that this world will be covered with the knowledge of God like the waters cover the bottom of the sea. The best is yet to be. I heard um, a uh, colored preacher say, when I read a book that is sad, I, and I, I do not like it, then I always look a moment at the last page. And when I read at the last page that they get each other and they lived happy for the rest of their lives together, now then I read also the sad things in the story. <laughs> and he said, when I read what in the Bible is written about things that are, will happen before Jesus comes again, and that are happening at this moment, then I get scared and I get sad. But then I do the same. I just look at the last page of the book. And there is written that Jesus has said, I will come and I will make everything new. Friends, we stand on victory ground. Because Jesus is coming and every knee will bow for him. Those who love him will bow in great joy. Those who have refused him will bow in great fear and you and I have to tell the people use the time and come to the Lord as soon as possible it is time to become dead serious with the Lord and we have to get ready all of us when I was arrested in Holland together with my family and my friends because we had saved Jewish people in Holland and we were brought to prison but first in a police station. My nephew Peter van Woorden came to me and said, Auntie, what have you in your shoe? I said, Romans 8. I said, what have you boy? He said, I have Ephesians 1. Do you know what mom has? Uh, 2 Corinthians 4, uh, 2, uh, 4. What did he mean? All of us knew we were going to a place where we could not have a Bible. And all of us uh, had put in our shoes and under our hair some uh, pages of the Bible. We were prepared. Peter was prepared. Boy of 16 years old because he knew now I come in prison and I must uh, have a little bit of the word of God to uh, uh, pass on to others. It is such a great joy that in the Bible we have everything we need to be equipped to be the light of the world, the, the salt of the earth. And when we are longing to bring the word of God, the Lord himself will use us as channels of streams of living water. It is not we who, who are building the kingdom of God, it is the Lord who is building his kingdom. And he will use you and me uh, to bring in this world the real peace that Jesus only can bring. Perhaps you will say, but I have not always an opportunity. But the joy is that when you stand on, at Jesus' side, you stand on victory ground. And when you don't know what to do, the Lord knows. I was in Russia, and I was not allowed uh, a foreigner was not allowed to stand on the pulpit and speak in the churches but we could bring greetings and uh, I brought greetings standing on the pulpit and I took half an hour <laughs> and then I said to the uh, then we sang a hymn and I asked the pastor may I say goodbye he said yes and I said goodbye half an hour <laughs> Sometimes in America I may speak 20 minutes and then I say, <laughs> I go to Russia, there I give a message of the whole hour. But there was one thing that I was sorry about. I once was in my hotel room and I said, Lord, 
uh, I am so glad that I can bring the gospel in the churches. But Lord, the, I should love so very much to bring the gospel to the communists. They have an eternity to lose or to gain. Lord, I need a miracle, but you are a God of miracles. And the same moment I saw on the floor little holes in the form of the holes of a pepper box. And I understood, aha, that is the secret microphone that is in all the hotel rooms in Russia and the other communist countries. And I said, thank you, Lord, that's the answer. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I brought the gospel to communists. Did they listen? Not only they listened, but they took my whole talk on a tape. And they didn't keep the tape, they brought the tape to their superiors. So I was very happy. The Lord. <laughs> and what a joy it was. I said, people, I have in my hand a book almost bursting of good news. In this book is given the answer for the two paramount problems in the hearts of men. The problem of sin and death. And in this book is said, told everything that we have to know of Jesus Christ. Who died to give us forgiveness of sins. And who lives to give us <coughs> the deliverance of sins. Once we heard that in a Jewish orphanage, all the babies had to be killed because they were Jewish babies. And when I heard it, I called my boys and I said, Boys, you must save these babies in Amsterdam in the orphanage. And my boys stole hundred babies. <laughs> and my girls uh, distributed these babies within one day. That was not difficult. Just imagine when there came someone to you with a baby in the hand and said, will you save the life of this baby? And if you don't do it and I cannot find someone else, this baby will be killed. I'm sure not one of you should say, no, but you should take the baby. Ah, uh, we were so happy when we had uh, uh, saved these hundred babies. Piet Hartog was one of my bravest boys. And he said that evening, Auntie, I think we do the most important work that exists. Just saving lives from the morning till the evening. I don't long to go back to college. This is life. This is worthwhile. I said, Pete, I am so happy when I think of the babies that we have saved today. But there is a work that is still more important. And that is not only save lives, but save souls and tell people about Jesus. Then Pete smiled. And Pete said, perhaps something that some of you say. He said, I'm a Christian boy. I go to church. I read my Bible. And I pray. <laughs> but telling people about Jesus, that is good business for my pastor. Perhaps some of you say the same. And I say the same to you what I said to Peter. I said, Pete, every Christian is called to be an ambassador for Christ and to bring the gospel. And Pete, in your life will come a time that you will see the most important work for you to tell people the way to heaven who is Jesus Christ. It was half a year later that Piet was arrested and came in prison. And there he heard that he had only one week to live. And the day before he was killed, he wrote us a long letter. And he wrote, all the boys and the men in this cell are sentenced to death. And I am so glad that I can tell them that Jesus Christ has died for the sins of the whole world, also for their sins. And that when they ask Jesus to come into their heart, that he will give them eternal life. And that when we will be shot 
uh, next uh, tomorrow that it will be for us to go to heaven. Now I know, Peter wrote, now I know that the most important thing for a Christian is to win souls for eternity. Young people here, I have a message for you from Piet Hartog. Don't wait till the last week like Piet has done, the last week of his life, the last week of your life. But say tonight, Lord, take my life and use it and make me a channel of streams of living water. Make me a real ambassador for you, a light in this dark world. And when you surrender for service tonight, then there will be a tremendous future for you. Once when you enter a beautiful city and the saved all around you appear, many of the people will tell you, it was you that invited me here. Then you will know that you have not lived in vain. Perhaps some of you think, I am not good enough. And then I think of a talk that I had in a prison in New Zealand. I spoke to these prisoners, these criminals, you are the light of the world. They do not hear that often. They hear most of the time, you are the darkness of the world. But I told them, when you give your heart to Jesus, he will make you the light of this prison. And they listened, and they were, I saw that they were happy to hear that God could use them. And one of the prisoners stood up afterwards and he said, Fellows, this morning I was reading in the Bible, and I read about uh, the story of three murderers. One was called Moses, one David, one Paul. What? Were they murderers? Yes. He was right. Once all these great men of God, Moses, Paul, and David, were once murderers. And this criminal said, Fellows, what can God do? with a total surrendered murderer and criminal like you and me. What can God do with a total surrendered, decent sinner like you and me? (laughs) Isn't it a joy that God can use us? And if the Lord Jesus has warned us, if anyone is ashamed of me and my words, The Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in the glory of the Father and the holy angels. You understand that I speak tonight for the youth for Christ. And I mean really not only the younger youth but also the riper youth for Christ. For every child of God here. But there are some of you who do not yet belong to the kingdom of God because you have not never accepted Jesus Christ as your savior now then this uh, call what I said is not for you but you must not uh, stand up and, and disappear and th- say oh now this message is not for me no it can be for you But first, there must happen something with you. I must warn you, if you neglect too long, it becomes reject. When you harden your heart, your heart gets hard. And before I go on with my message, I invite all the people here who have never said yes to Jesus to say tonight Lord Jesus I need you I am a sinner and I say yes Lord come into my life and the moment that you say that 
the Lord Jesus will come in your life and that same moment there is work for you to do in this world. And I'll never forget that I was in Bermuda in a prison and I saw a man in a cell and he had a red rag on his back, the back of his uniform. I asked the guard, has that man tried to run away? He said, yes, how do you know that? I said, when we tried to run away in the three prisons where I have been a prisoner, we also got a red rag on the back of our uniform. Ah, the man said, that man is a murderer and he has the sentence of whippings and whippings are terrible cruel. And that man had been so terrible afraid that they had run away and they had found him and they had given him a double portion of weapon and he was sitting there in the corner of his cell like a wounded animal and I went to him I said hey fellow have you had a weapon yes was it bad yes I said did he bring you to a hospital afterwards no it wasn't as bad he stood up and came to the bar door. He thought, what a strange uh, question this lady asked. And I said, did they treat your wounds? Yes. I said, is there hatred in your heart? He said, hatred? My whole heart is full of hatred. I said, that I can understand. <laughs> you. I said, yes, I. And then I told what I felt when they whipped my sister in prison because she was too frail, too weak to shuffle sands. How there came hatred in my heart. But a miracle happened. I claimed the text in the Bible, the love of God is shed abroad into my heart through the Holy Spirit who is given to me. And I said, thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have brought into my heart God's love. And thank you, Father, that your love in me is stronger than my hatred. And I could love these enemies, these people who are cruel for Betsy, my sister. And I said, when you ask Jesus to come into your heart, he will also make you full of his love and peace and joy. And I showed him the way of salvation, and that man accepted the Lord Jesus as his Savior. And we prayed together. And after we prayed, I left. And then he said, wait lady, have you another uh, five minutes? I said, yeah, sure, why? He said, in the third cell there is a man who is in great darkness. And will you please tell him also of Jesus? A babe in Christ of five minutes old. And he had already a burden for souls. How old are you? Have you a burden for souls? I went to the man in the third cell. And when I told him about the cross of Jesus, where the sins were carried of the whole world, when I told him, that, that man, that he could come to Jesus and confess his sins, and that the Lord would cleanse his heart and fill him with the Holy Spirit and the joy of the Lord, I, I prayed, and at last that man also made that decision that did the angels rejoice for every person is so important that the angels rejoice when they come to Jesus I prayed with him too and then when I left I went to the murderer I said say fellow that was good what you did that you have sent me to that man in the third cell he also has accepted Jesus as his saviour and the murderer stood up and he looked around me and he sh shouted over the corridor, Hi, brother! <laughs> Hi, brother! That is what you will hear when you come in heaven. And you will meet the people that have found the, the answer for their problems and the way for eternity 
who have found the Lord Jesus through your testimony. What a joy. I know that there are here in um, this town many uh, workers in Youth for Christ. I never have known that there were uh, uh, such uh, huge groups of Youth for Christ people who were full time in the work for the Lord. And they told that they give instruction to other young people. So when there are here who are willing to go in full in the work for winning souls, you are in a very good opportunity to get instruction. But you and they will experience that sometimes you will fail. It will not go always so easy. It will not be always such a success as we did murder in Bermuda. But when you have failed, then don't be afraid. Once I, was, I heard the story of a weaver's school. And these weavers, these students, were making most beautiful patterns in their weavings. And the visitor asked, say, when you make an, uh, a mistake, must you cut it out or start from the beginning? And the student said, no, when I make a mistake, our teacher is such a great artist that he uses that mistake to improve the beauty of the pattern. That is what the Lord does. When you bring your mistakes and your blunders to the Lord, He will use that to improve the beauty of the pattern. I see that some of you look happy. Some look at me as if they say, I can't understand it. So I will tell you what happened in my life. <clears throat> I was in for the first time in Japan. And I could not recognize the people there. They had all the same flat faces. And there was a Mr. Sekia, and there were three Mr. Sekias, and then ten. I, I could not uh, see who was who. Once I had a student's group, and when I was speaking, I saw a man entering who came late. I thought, oh yes, that is the director of the seminary, the Bible seminary. But he was not. He was a professor of a non-Christian university. But when I was through, I said to him, uh, uh, Sir, will, will you please now uh, uh, close this meeting with a prayer? <laughs> the man said, I? I never prayed in my life. <laughs> Suddenly I saw my blunder. And I saw who he, who he was. And said, oh, professor, it doesn't matter. I will, I will close. And I... I prayed, but he came to me, and Japanese people are very polite, and he bowed several times for me, and uh, said, I was so sorry that I could not do what you asked. I said, Professor, I honor you that you said no. If you had been more superficial, you should have said a prayer without believing it, but that you didn't do it. But tell me, why are you not a Christian? He said, I... No, that first I must study Christianity. I said, no, sir. In this book is written, not those who study Christianity will become children of God, but those who receive Jesus Christ as their Savior, they become Christians and children of God. And I talked with him, I prayed with him, and that man made a decision for Jesus Christ. He was a strategic point in the University of Tokyo. Now, do you see the, uh, the pattern? God used the blunder of a dumb Dutch to save that man. <laughs> but I had to surrender it. So, don't be afraid. When you make a blunder, just bring it to the Lord. He will improve the pattern. In this time, it can be very dangerous to be an ambassador for Jesus Christ. Many, many Christians have to suffer persecution. I know it. There comes a moment that 
the Christians will be translated before the, tri- before the tribulation comes I do not know there is now a tribulation there is now a persecution so enormous that about 60% of the body of Christ is suffering persecution and we must understand it for we are one body of Christ in the world and watchman he said when my feet were with my hands uh, suffered pain and when people in Africa are uh, tortured to death we have to pray for them and over the whole world we must be faithful to pray for the Christians who are in concentration camps the people behind the iron and the bamboo curtains there are many many Christians who are suffering and it is not impo- uh, impossible that you have to suffer over some time but then think of Peter Peter van Woorden my nephew who had in his uh, 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 shoe Romans 8 he was prepared and I believe you and I must prepare to be ready even when we have to suffer for the Lord and I like to find in the Bible the text that can help me when I come in the tribulation and when I was in tribulation in the concentration camps when I read God does not give us a spirit of fear but of power of love and a sound mind I said thank you Lord when I read that Jesus said you will have power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you and when I read that God has a telescopic and a microscopic interest in us the hairs of our head are numbered and God has the whole universe in his hands I was in Africa in a Christian boys school and oh what a joy it was these boys were full of the joy of the Lord and they really were in their way ambassadors for Jesus Christ I met a missionary with whom I had worked and I asked him tell me how are my boys in that boys school we had such a good time together and he said these boys they are all murdered all killed I said oh how terrible these beautiful boys and then he said do you remember that boy who had such a beautiful voice I said yes there was a boy who had such a beautiful voice you could listen to him always and he said when the he had to be shot he asked the soldier will you wait a moment may I may I first sing and with his beautiful heavenly voice he sang out of my bondage sorrow and night Jesus I come into thy freedom gladness and light Jesus I come to thee out of the uh, depths of ruins untold into the peace of thy sheltering fold ever thy glorious face to behold Jesus I come to thee and then he was shot do you see that boy had grace to be a martyr he had not a spirit of fear but a spirit of power of love and a sound mind I remember that I was in Usumura and it was a terrible time I heard that many Christians were killed it was in Burundi and that week every day Christians had got a letter you must be registered in the police station and they had come and they were all shot and when I stood there in a church I saw that there was fear 
It was Sunday morning and the people looked at each other and they looked and thought, will he be shot this week? Will she be alive next week? Will she be killed? Will I be there? And there was such a fear that I said, oh Lord, give me a message for these people. And the Lord gave me and I read First Peter 4, 12. Now, dear friends of my mind, I beg you not to be unduly alarmed at the fiery ordeals which come to test your faith. As though this were some abnormal experience, you should be glad because it means that you are called to share Christ's sufferings. One day, when he shows himself in full splendor to men, you will be filled with the most tremendous joy. If you are reproached for being Christ's followers, that's a great privilege, for you can be sure that God's spirit of glory is resting upon you. And I told these people the story that you can read in my book, The Hiding Place. When I was a little girl, I said, Daddy, I will never be strong enough to be a martyr for Jesus. And Father said, when you go with the train, when do I give you your train ticket? Three weeks before. I said, no, Daddy, the day that I go to travel. And Father said, so God does. And you do not need to have grace and strength to be a martyr for Jesus. But the day that you have to travel, the Lord will you give you the ticket. And I said, people, you will get the grace. For God will not give you a spirit of fear, but of power, of love and a sound mind. I was in Switzerland, in Lausanne. And I met a lady from Usumbura. And I asked her, tell me. How was Radio Kordak? That was the radio where I had worked there. And she said, oh, so good. Two years it has been closed. Now it is open and 24 hours a day the, the gospel goes from that radio over Africa. I said, tell me, how are my friends? She said, your friends? They are all killed. Oh, she saw how sad I was. And then she laid her hand on my shoulder and she smiled. And she said, Cory, they are promoted ahead of us. Do you see that? I said, and you... Are you staying now in Europe or America? She said, no. As soon as the, uh, this is over, I go back to Usmura. I said, but are you not in danger? Oh, yes. She said, we are all in danger. But that doesn't matter. She was ready to give her life for the Lord. And I am going to ask you tonight, are you ready to give your life for the Lord and when you are not quite sure then I must tell you something that I experienced in the concentration camp one of the most terrible things I had to suffer was that I had to stand naked they stripped us of all our clothing and I said to Betsy my sister I cannot bear this I have never felt so unhappy and suddenly it was, if I saw Jesus at the cross, and the Bible tells, they took his garments, he hung there naked. And through my suffering, I understood a fraction of the suffering of Jesus, and it made me so thankful that I could bear my suffering, love so amazing. So divine demands my life, my soul, my all. We follow a scarred captain. Should not we have scars? Under his mighty banners we are going to the wars. Lest we forget, Lord, when we meet 
show us your hands and feet. Are you willing to be a grain of wheat that must die? A grain of wheat that is not willing to die cannot have fruit. But when you are ready, the Lord will use you. And look at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And the burden of my sins rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And when you look at the cross, you hear the voice of the Lord saying, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And I'm going to ask you, will you have a talk with the Lord tonight? Are you willing to surrender? Are you willing to surrender to be the light of the world in a very dark time? This world is dead sick. But who is it that overcomes the world? He that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Listen, you who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. You are called to overcome a world, a world that is ill, that is broken, and the Lord will use you. But you must surrender, you must be willing. And when I look at the missionaries, so often I see more missionaries, lady missionaries than men missionaries. And sometimes I doubt when a young man gives himself to the Lord for service, that he says, Lord, take my life, but send my sister. <laughs> no! Say, take my life and send me. Yes, Lord, also when it means suffering, the cross, perhaps death. And I ask you to surrender all also that little bit that shelf behind the door tear it down throw it out don't use it anymore for Jesus wants your dwelling from the ceiling to the floor he even wants that little shelf you keep behind the door and may the God of peace Make you holy through and through. May you be kept in spirit, soul and body in spotless integrity until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is utterly faithful and he will finish what he has set out to do. We pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you that you have talked to us and we know that we have all to give an answer and it is yes or no there's nothing in between Lord Jesus you have talked to those who have never asked you to come into their hearts listen who now says yes Jesus come into my life I will bring you all my sins. And I believe that at the cross you have bore also my sins. Yes, Lord, oh, make also me your ambassador, your child of the light. Thank you, Lord, that those who come to you, you will in no wise cast out. And Lord, there are far more here who have to answer that other question. Listen, Lord, who says, Yes, Jesus, I belong to you already a long time or a short time, but I know that I'm a child of God. I know that you died at the cross for my sins and that you live 
for my deliverance, that I may follow you, and that you will use me as light, as your ambassador. And tonight I understand it better than before. Yes, Lord, yes, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Yes, Lord, even if it could be persecution, I am ready, I am willing to take up my cross, for you will give me not a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. Hallelujah. Amen. My friends, the Lord has spoken to me and he has spoken to you. And I am going to ask you, before you will have the official invitation, are there here who has said, so during this prayer, yes Lord, take my life. I will, I will also be saved. Did you accept Jesus? And did you say, come into my life, Lord Jesus? Just raise your hands one moment that I see it. It is far too dark here, I cannot see it, but the Lord sees the hands. But I am also asking, are here people who are children of God? And have said this evening, yes, Lord, yes, take my life. And even if it is the cross and persecution, use me as your ambassador. And now I am going to ask you if you will raise your hand. But if you do not mean it, don't raise your hand. I have done it. Are there more? Thank you. The Lord has seen which hands were raised. There were many. And I invite you to have a talk with the Lord tonight. And ask him, Lord, what did it mean that I said yes? And the Lord will tell you what it meant. That you belong to the Lord, lock, stock and bell. And I have now a word to those who did not raise your hands. Have a talk with the Lord tonight and tell him why you didn't do it. Perhaps you must say, Lord, I don't like to raise hands. But you know, Lord, I will belong to you. Use my life and the Lord is happy. Perhaps there are some of you who must say, Lord, I did not raise my hand for I am afraid. And then the Lord will tell you, don't be afraid. I will give you a spirit, not of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. And when there are also people here who may say, Lord, I did not raise my hands, for I am not willing to belong to you. I will belong to myself. My friends, I will pray for you that you cannot sleep till you have said that. <laughs>